Itaqum Allah Ta'ala wa ta'imun al-lazina wa kal-lazina hum muhsinun Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya'i wa mursalin Sayyidina wa maulana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in All praises are due to Allah, Lord of the universes All praises are due to Allah, the King of Kings He who gives power to whom He wills and takes power away from whom he wills. He honors whom he wills, and he disgraces whom he wills. In his hand is the good, and he has might and power over all things. And may all peace and blessings be upon the Sultan of the Prophets, the Imam of the Messengers, the intercessor of the Day of Judgment, the mercy to the universes, the master of the first and the last, Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, and upon his noble family and blessed companions, especially upon the four Khulafai Rashidin, Hazrat Ubaqa Siddiq, Hazrat Umar Farooq, Hazrat Usman al Ghani, and Hazrat Ali al Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. Ya Yuhal Mu'minun, O believers, welcome to you in this holy day of Juma. In the 22nd day of Jumad al-Awwal, in the year 1436. Welcome to you, as we are just less than 40 days away from entering of the Shahrullah, the holy month of Rajab. Believers must be preparing and getting ready for the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are approaching. The believers must know where they are and where they are going. Believers must be making preparations. O oh, believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us in the Holy Quran, in Surah Al-Ali Imran, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim And hold firmly to the rope of Allah altogether, and do not become divided. And remember the favor of Allah upon you. When you were enemies, and he brought your hearts together and you became by his favor brothers. And you were on the edge of a pit of the fire and he saved you from it. Thus does Allah make clear to you his verses that you may be guided. As the Holy Prophet والسلام, is saying in his Hadith Sharif, the Muslim Ummah, it is a unique Ummah among the whole of mankind. Their land is one. Their struggle is one. Their peace is one. Their honor is one. And their trust is one. And he's saying in the Hadith Sharif, the Muslim Ummah is like one body. If the eye is in pain, then the whole body is in pain. And if the head is in pain, then the whole body is in pain. And Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu is saying, We were the lowliest of people, but Allah gave us might and glory through Islam. If we seek glory through other than what Allah gave us glory through, He will disgrace us. O oh, Muslims of the 21st century, we must look to our condition. Look to the state of this ummah. If we look to the state of this ummah with real eyes, then we will understand that this ummah is in the lowest, lowest, the most worst condition it has been since the beginning of Islam. And why is that? Because this ummah let go of the rope of Allah. Because this ummah became divided because our land became divided because our struggle became divided because our peace became divided because our honor became divided because our trust became divided because this ummah is no longer one body it has been cut apart and it has been scattered east and west north and south what happened to the ummah just what Hazrat Umar al-Farooq, the Imam of Justice, is saying. The Muslims, 
they left their religion. And they looked to glory in other than what was given to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what was given to the Muslims by Allah that gave them glory? What is it that the Muslims abandoned that has made them fall into this disgrace? The Holy Prophet is saying, the Sultan, he is the shadow of Allah upon the earth. The weak seek refuge with him, and by him the oppressed are given victory. Whoever honors the Sultan of Allah in the world, Allah honors him on the day of judgment. And Farooq al-Azam, Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu is saying, Fear and obey Allah, your Lord, until the day of resurrection. As if you see him. And obey the ruler even if he is a cut-nosed Abyssinian slave. If he beats you, be patient. If he robs you, be patient. And if he belittles you, be patient. Never leave the main jama'at of the Muslims. The reason for the humiliation and the disgrace of this ummah is that we have lost our khalifa. It is because this ummah rejected the shadow of Allah on earth. This ummah we said we do not need a rightly guided leader. We do not need to be ruled by the grandchildren of the Prophet We want to find honor and glory in other than Islam. And since that time, this ummah is sinking. This ummah is falling into more and more troubles. And all of the terrible things that we see happening to this ummah, they are happening because our head has been removed. So we are in this weak position. And what can we do? Our Shaykh Sahib al-Sahib is teaching us, saying, all that happened to us, to the Muslims, why? Since we left Allah, over a hundred years ago, we have risen against the ruler that Allah sent to us, the Khalifa. We have risen against him. All nations, Muslim nations, rose against him, saying, we don't want this kind of ruling. We don't want these kinds of laws. What are these laws? Remove it. We put our own laws. And now you are okay. In all Muslim nations, things that never happened in their dreams, now it's happening there worse than the Western countries. Watch. I don't have to tell you. You know how it is. You know better than me. So, what's in it for us? We are a part of it. We have to sit and we have to pray. Yes, Ya Rabbi, we are in it. We are part of it. We are asking for forgiveness. Ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say, yes, if you give me the power, I will stand up. And I will change all these wrong things. And I'm starting to change the wrong things with myself. And I'm promising to you that I'm going to live according to your laws, not according to my ego. So we must look for our sultan. We must want our Sultan. In our hearts, the beating of our hearts, it must beat with the longing and the passion for our Khalifa, for our Sultan, for the Ottomans to come back. And for that passion to enter into our hearts, we must honor and keep our highest respect to those who lived and died for the Hilafat. In just a few days, we're entering to the commemoration of those real men, those real Muslims, those real servants of Allah, those real servants of the Prophet, those real servants of the awliya, the real servants of the Khalifa, who gave the proof for their passion with their lives. What are we talking about? We are talking about the martyrs of Chanakale. We are talking about that small group of believers who stood up against the greatest worldly powers to defend the Khalifatullah. We are talking about those Turkish soldiers, those Kurdish soldiers, those Cherkes soldiers who stood up for the Khalifa while Muslims from India and Africa were fighting on the side of the unbelievers. We are talking about those ones who were starving in the trenches of 
Chanakala, who did not even have proper weapons, who did not even have shoes, who gave their blood as a sacrifice to protect the Sultan of Allah. As our Shaykh is explaining, saying, Chanakala is a war that has never happened before. Never has a war like that happened before where 250,000 people died right over there within a short period of time. For what? They didn't go there to protect their houses, to protect their wealth, to protect their children. They went there to protect Islam, to protect the Khalifa, to protect the flag of Islam. And they died. They sacrificed their lives. Those Mehmetchiks, those little Mehmets, those little servants of the Holy Prophet, والسلام, that they represented, that they presented their lives back to their Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the sake of their Rasul and for the sake of their Khalifa. We must run to remember, to honor to put the martyrs of Chanakala in our hearts. Whether we honor them or not, they are honored by the inhabitants of the heavens and the earth. They are honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we must honor them and we must ask to have the passion, the sincerity and the hizmat that they had. We must ask for the hearts that they had. Because it is only with that kind of heart that we can be with our Shaykh to bring back the Hilafat to bring back the Sultanate, to be with Mahdi salam. If we don't have that passion, definitely we cannot be with them. In these days, we should run to wake up. As our Shah is saying, this is what these soldiers did in Chanakala. No one can say or treat them or give them the deserving title of where they belong. As the poet is saying, I cannot give you and I cannot do anything for you. But the Holy Prophet والسلام, is waiting in front of you. He has opened his jubba to every one of you. When we are sitting, thinking, concentrating and trying to understand what had happened and how those people gave their lives, if we are not finding in our hearts to be able to say, if I was in that situation, I would also be able to sacrifice my life. If we cannot find it in our hearts to say that, we must check our faith. Because with that kind of faith, we cannot reach anywhere. We need that kind of faith to pass the sirat, the bridge. If you understand what it is to sacrifice your life for Allah, His Prophet and for His religion, if we are not finding that in our hearts, then we must check ourselves and we must work on ourselves to be able to understand what is it to sacrifice for Islam. When it comes to talk, it's easy talking. We must sit, think and concentrate to understand. That will make our faith to grow then. Ya Rabbi, we are asking for a real faith that will keep us with our shaykh this life and the next life. Amen. Um.